Hello everyone, my name is Michelle and today I'm going to be making a scary video about Yellowstone National Park because I was scrolling through YouTube and I saw this video that was titled Scientists Terrifying New Discovery at National Park Changes Everything and that's when I kind of got scared because I've always kind of been interested in the idea of Yellowstone volcano exploding. I've heard that it's long overdue, it's exploded many times in the past, and people know this because it's so interesting. There's like this layer of obsidian in the rocks where everything is layered with rocks, and then there's one layer of obsidian where it's like, that's when the explosion happened. If you were wondering, this is a super volcano. So there's other volcanoes that are actively exploding a lot around the world. I mean, not a lot, but like, you know how over the news you hear about these horrifying instances where people, they can't escape from these volcanoes on an island and they die and it's, you know, it's just so sad in, in different countries. Yellowstone is not just a volcano, nigh. It is a super volcano. So this place actually gets up to 5,000 earthquakes a year. People often don't feel these because they're so small. And it's so interesting because the reason I originally wanted to go to Yellowstone is because of how beautiful it is. Um, I saw a video and lots of information about how the black bears there will go into all your shit. I hope you enjoy the video. have a fascination with bears and the wilderness who wouldn't want to visit Yellowstone it's fascinating Yellowstone actually has more geysers and hot springs than the entire world combined in the national park alone not the entire beautiful forest there are 300 waterfalls but there's also 10,000 natural hot water springs I've been to a natural spring before where like we hiked a very long time in like California around Big Bear we got into this very very hot little rock formation of water and it was like like, hmm, very interesting. But now that I'm thinking about it, that's actually mortifying. I, like, if I went to Yellowstone, I'd probably just be freaking out the whole time. Probably something you would be most interested in is so interesting is the geysers. It is so hot. It is hotter than two pizza ovens. It can cook meat in the split of a second. Old Faithful is the biggest geyser in the entire park, and it's super famous. There's a bunch of seats around it so people can watch it. Literally, every 90 minutes, Old Faithful is very faithful in uh, creating this extreme explosion into the air of extremely hot water. And that's why a lot of people say you have to be careful at this park. It's not fun in games. Like, obviously, no forest is fun in games, but it's like, you can't let your kid run around. You can't let your dog out. I don't want your dog to be fried alive. Ideally. When Old Faithful goes off, everyone's like, oh, it's going to go, like, go to take a nap for 90 minutes and come back. But actually, what's happening is the water is getting so, so, so hot underneath that it's waiting 90 minutes to finally explode into the air. Something that is so interesting about this park is that it's such a family-friendly park. Everyone goes there with their family, but something so scary about this is that right under you is this super massive volcano um, with a bunch of lava. Yellowstone actually exists in Wyoming. All the way down in Southern California, they were able to find remnants of the rocks from Yellowstone in Wyoming. I used to think Wyoming was pronounced Wyomi. And I corrected my dad on that a bunch of times. I was like, no dad, it's Wyoming. <laughs> Anyways, basically what that means is just the explosion itself was able to make rocks fly all the way. Like this deep, thick smoke that is not smoke. It's more like bread dough. It's so thick. And the rock was actually found in California. And guess what? That means that the rest of the world might be very slightly affected by this super massive volcano. When it explodes, sort of the east-west, the northeast, the east-west, people who are there will die instantly. Now don't fear if you live over there, like, you're in Washington state, like, excuse me? While Yellowstone is extremely overdue for another volcanic explosion, scientists are able to, and as technology is getting better, even back in the 60s, technologists were able to say, okay, when this volcano does end up exploding, we might actually be able to know beforehand, which is 
great for us because um, we can fucking evacuate or do something about it. In my mind, it was always, oh well, it could happen at any second, like we could just die. I live in the Midwest, Chicago. It's really great. I'm moving to Arizona though. <laughs> Random. Us over here, we would still be affected. There would still be a bunch of dust, a bunch of stuff. I don't know if we would die from the inhalation. So there's basically this lava that's very slowly seeping in through this one crack through the Earth's core. The specific lava over this national park actually could span 400 miles deep, which is more than the distance between New York and Washington back and forth. Just imagine that much lava under you. Oh wait, I guess I can because we all are. So it's actually really interesting. I would love, love, love to visit this place, hear a little bit of the rangers side of it because literally these geysers. All right, so take all of this lava 400 feet down and whatever, and then it comes up into this little like pocket where the volcano is. And in there is where there's these little parts that seep out and those are the explosions. I mean, I don't understand how it doesn't explode. Nature's weird. Yellowstone's position hasn't changed since 2005. It was and still is the second highest risk category, high risk. This category means that one day it may threaten people through volcanic activity of some kind. Again, this categorization does not in any way indicate that it will erupt and indeed there are zero signs that it will erupt in the near future. Most of its magma reservoir is currently solid, which means it's not even close to being able to erupt. So the rumor that's being spread by that website is quite nonsense. It's also quite frankly exhausting. Yellowstone is often made out by nefarious sectors of the web to be an apocalyptic cannon that's ready to burst. And the latest article sadly is just like it. this article came out that was talking about Yellowstone and how likely it was to explode, how all of these eruptions and such and like geothermic shift, it means it might erupt anytime soon. But it was actually came out that this was all false. However, a lot of people talk about how they would prefer people talk about natural hazards and the things that can naturally go wrong in this park. Because a lot of scientists say this is extremely unlikely to erupt anytime soon. If it did, it would kill thousands. Now, I don't know about that. Like, I've seen a lot of significant evidence that that's not true. I don't know if it's because they want to attract tourists. Um, I guess they said that it was scaring tourists away, the fact that it was a super volcano. So they were like, um, the fact that it's a super volcano doesn't mean anything, really. It's just means that there's a bunch of lava under us. <laughs> Yellowstone Volcano has been dated to be as old as 2,100 million years old and throughout its lifetime has erupted on average every 600,000 to 700,000 years. The last eruption took place 640,000 years ago, putting us in the area of uncertainty whether the supervolcano will follow its previous trends. If Yellowstone supervolcano decides it is its time to erupt, this wouldn't be the first time civilization would be at the mercy of a supervolcano. Historically, Mount Versailles, a supervolcano known for turning in its entire civilization into ash in 79 AD, the eruption was rated as an 8 on a scale that ranges from 0 to 8. On this day, archaeologists are still uncovering ash from Pompeii to discover ancient artifacts and bodies that were there who were unlucky enough to be turned to ash throughout the madness. Something super interested, I would love to talk about the Pompeii explosion because there's a really cool movie on it and also there's like these people who are found who were just- time was frozen when the- volcano exploded and there was this one people who had turned into like dust they appeared to be either like cuddling or kissing which is uh it's so sweet i don't know it's it's also horrifying like i don't know i'm kind of in denial of death um i'm kind of in between we're gonna die anyway so just don't even think about it and maybe death is something that we shouldn't be scared of because of afterlife or universal properties i don't know I, the, the idea of death is horrifying it's mortifying to me and my therapist said it'll be less scary scary if I talk about it, but even when she talks about it, I, I get upset. Like, even when I was like 12 years old, I got into this huge existential crisis, my first existential crisis, where I was like, and my dad is such an atheist that he was like, and it's gonna be like sitting in a, in a black room in a seat for the rest of your life. And I'm like, for the rest of your life. And I'm like, a black seat? Like, it's gonna be like you're in the dark. And he's like, no, not even that. You're not even, it's just gonna be blackness forever. And so that was something that I was taught at a young age. Oh my God, please let me know your experiences and your opinion on death. Oh my God, I would love to know because death is so fucking scary. Scientists have talked about what could happen if Yellowstone supervolcano were to erupt on a modern day setting throughout the United States. 
one scientist spoke on Medically Daily and reported that scientists predict that 5 billion people in total would die as a result of the eruption. This number is so high because of the area of effect of the lava, but the smog and ash that would be produced by causing climate change and ultimately resulting in incredible number of people starving to death. So basically there would just be this giant cloud over us forever. We would all just starve to death because we'd have no food. The smog from these volcanoes will span roughly 500 kilometers distance, almost completely blocking out the sun. Those areas of plants will die due to sunlight not being available. After this, the entirety of the food chain will suffer, including humans at the top. As of today, there are no clear signs that Yellowstone's supervolcano is anywhere close to erupting. Once signs begin, though, besides the evacuation, there is only so much we can do. Once this event happens, our way of life would change, and it's not only the United States that would suffer, but the world's economy as well, due to the U.S. being the number one importer and exporter of goods and services. Not to mention, this event would cripple our military defense, creating the likelihood that another nation attack in the U.S. in order to take down a world power. Power, creating World War III and creating what is likely to be a nuclear firefight with no winners. So that's great. I actually did not know that. I thought it was because the volcano was going to be so explosive that it was going to actually destroy other parts of the country, which in, it kind of makes sense because it's like if Americans' animals don't have food, where are they going to get it? They're going to have to get it from somewhere else. And where are those people going to have food? Because Americans are so selfish because they... We're Americans. We are the best country in the world, obviously. On March 1st, 1872, Yellowstone became the first national park in the United States for all to enjoy the unique hydrothermal and geological feature. Within Yellowstone's 2.2 million acres, visitors have unparalleled opportunities to observe wildlife and interact with the ecosystem, explore geothermic areas that contain about half the world's active geysers, and view geological wonders like the Grand Canyon uh, of the Yellowstone River. Fun fact, if we t <laughs> if we t fun fact time, if we took every single human, seven or eight billion, I don't even know how many we have, in the world and put them inside the Grand Canyon, we wouldn't fit at all, by far. Now you know. You learned something today. Please, please, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, turn on the bell, and comment below if you would like to do so. Your experiences with death. Thank you so much for watching this video. It is so, so appreciated. Like, why? Take care. Have a good day. Blessed.